When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. In December 1938, the writer J.P. McEvoy wrote a profile of Robert Maynard Hutchins. At only 30 years old, Hutchins had become the fifth president of the University of Chicago. He was the youngest university president in the country. And the article said, mostly in jest, that the secret to Hutchins, who was young, tall, trim, intelligent, handsome, his secret was that whenever the impulse to exercise came over him, Hutchins would lie down until it passed away. Now, if you're anything like me and you have lived this way, you know that the day you decide to get off this path, the day you decide, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm gonna take that exercise class, I'm going to work with a personal trainer, the day you decide that is significant. After only a few months of working out, the body starts to change. After a year, the transformation is almost miraculous more energy, more strength, more endurance, more confidence. No wonder there are gyms every few blocks here in Manhattan. Now also on every few blocks in Manhattan are churches. But here the transformation potential is more unevenly realized. I mean, do you know people and maybe this describes you, because it's described me, who go to church for years, even decades, and yet are the same as ever. What makes one experience rote and another one transformative? A couple of years ago in Chicago, Angie Thurston, and Casper Turkile of the Sacred Design Lab gave a presentation. They noted that the number one thing that makes an experience transformative is the amount of risk it asks of the participants. Being a member of Jesus' family certainly had risks. Risks like public shame Mark's gospel tells us when his family heard it, they went out to restrain Jesus for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. In fact, the translation that better fits the Greek and the context is that it is Jesus's own family who says, he has gone out of his mind. From the very earliest days of his ministry, the people who followed Jesus were thought of as fools. Even his own family thought Jesus was literally out of his mind. And for the Apostle Paul, to be a follower of Jesus meant the same thing. It meant the risk of being a fool. We know Paul writes to the members of the church in Corinth that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also, and will bring us into his presence. Paul did not shy away from this astounding claim. Paul leaned into it. In his first letter to the church community in Corinth, Paul writes, Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. And remember that Paul did not grow up a fool. Paul was highly educated. He was an accomplished Pharisee. As he tells the church in Philippi in another letter, as to righteousness under the law, I was blameless. But all of his intellectual accomplishments, he says, were rubbish compared to knowing Jesus Christ 
and the power of his resurrection. The very first president of the University of Chicago was a Baptist clergyman, William Harper. Harper's vision for the university was to model it on the great German research universities founded in the 19th century, like the University of Berlin. Harper was a highly accomplished scholar of the Old Testament, and he believed that research and science, that highly advanced modern methods of biblical interpretation, would bring intelligent people back to Christianity. Otherwise, he was afraid that the Christian faith would be unintelligible to the intelligent men and women of the 20th century. Now, with the accelerating secularization of our culture, this effort to reduce the public shame of being a Christian by trying to make Christianity respectable to its intellectual and culture despisers, I think we can say it's failed. And how could it not have failed? Our beliefs are too foolish. We believe that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will raise us also and bring us into his presence. There is no way to make that astounding claim sound reasonable. There is no way to get around public ridicule when we claim belief in the resurrection of Jesus and belief in the promise of our own resurrection. Our own families might say, we are out of our minds. And yet, when we risk making a fool of ourselves for Jesus, when we open ourselves up, then church becomes a transformative experience. When we allow ourselves to believe that even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. That if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. When we risk believing this and living as though it were true, because it is true, then we'll find that our lives will become transformed.